Can you give a brief description of the research that you do? <sighs> <laughs> If you first see them and you go, oh my gosh, and it's icky, then you know you kind of pass on it. But when I first saw them, I just thought they were really amazingly elegant. My name is Diana Chu, and I'm an assistant professor of biology at San Francisco State University. I am Chinese, and I, um, I guess I identify with being Chinese, Chinese-American because my parents were born in China, but I was born in the United States. In the broadest sense, I do research on male fertility. And one of the things that's really important about fertility is how you get certain traits from your parents. So one of the things that is really important for that is the DNA that you get from your dad or your mom. But I research it in a tiny mama organism called C. elegans. And they're very simple organisms, um, but you can do a lot with them. Um, and actually there have been three Nobel Prizes won by using C. elegans to do research. And so they're amazingly powerful. So C. elegans have two different sexes, just like people, except the sexes are a little different. C. elegans have hermaphrodites and males. The hermaphrodites make sperm and the males make sperm. So it's actually really great to study them because both of the sexes make sperm. So what we're really interested in is how the sperm is made and how the DNA is packaged inside the sperm so it'll get delivered to the new embryo and help that embryo develop. And that makes it a lot easier for us to study than studying it in humans. And so I feel like we have uh, almost like a playground to play in to do all sorts of different types of experiments on these little worms. But still, what we do is really closely connected to what happens in humans, and it matters to humans. I wasn't involved in science clubs because I don't think that there were any science clubs where I was at. But I was involved in a minority science program over the summer. Um, I grew up in Reno, Nevada, and there wasn't a lot of minority kids at my school. So as a Chinese American, I qualified to go to this minority program where we did research in um, professor's labs at the university and it changed my life. I just loved it. I thought it was like entering a different world where people had got to use all sorts of cool equipment and wear lab coats and I just thought that was the coolest thing. So I fell in love with research when I went into that program. I really love interacting with other people and I think that really surprised me because when I thought about going into science, I thought about um, that I liked doing the lab work and the bench work and maybe that I wasn't such a people person. But now that I'm a scientist and working with other scientists, I find that the thing I really love is to work with colleagues and to work with students. And that's that personal connection that you make is really, really enjoyable. Um, I think that I've been lucky. I've had a lot, a lot of people kind of guide me along the way. And of course my parents are very influential. I think my mom particularly because she um, was a woman and she was kind of navigating going into academics as well. She worked when I was a little kid and she also went back to school when I was young. And so I think that yeah, that was a big role model for me to be able to see that there's this person there who could accomplish a lot. So my mom early in life I think laid a foundation that I didn't realize until later was a lot more important. Now I have my kind of core family with my husband and my kids. As a woman, you know, that was one of the barriers I think that turned a lot of people away is, oh, it looks so hard. Can you have kids? Can you have a family? And I'm like, totally. Like, I have two kids and it's great. It's a great part of my life. One of the biggest obstacles um, for me has kind of been um, some of the limits that I I put on myself. It's hard to um, choose a path when the path looks really, really hard. Um, so it's easy to say, well, I don't think I'm going to go that way and I'm just going to pick the easier way. But instead, I've been trying to challenge myself and think, well, there's no real reason why I can't try it. And if I try it and I fail, at least I tried. And I think that that has been actually more fun and more um, rewarding. The advice that I would give to young girls who are thinking about science is to just try. 
find things that, about it that, are, that you like. And I think that sometimes you think you're supposed to like certain things or you're supposed to do things a certain way. And sometimes you have to find your own way to what you like about it and what you think is important and how you're going to do it. And so part of it is, is listening to your own voice and finding out what it is. And the other part is finding people who can help you to get where you're going and, and using those mentors to, to really learn from.